so it appears as though we've all been tricked. Uh, Togashi really throws a curveball with this Hisoka and Krolo fight, and I'm going to explain in this video why this fight was not a 1v1 fight like we all thought, and I'm going to explain why it was a 1v4 fight. That's right, Hisoka ended up taking on not one spider member, not two spider members, or three spider members. He took out four spider members at the same time, and I'm going to explain why in this video. Now, this all started when somebody hit me up on Twitter saying that there is a popular Japanese theory going around the internet which states that, in fact, Krolo was not fighting alone. And uh, I spent the last six hours researching and rereading the fight over and over again. I think I have a good understanding of what went on in the fight. But there's too much to talk about for one video. So this video, I'm going to talk about the theory. Next video of Hunter Hunter, I'll make a full analysis of the fight, going over exactly what abilities Krolo was using at which times. And hopefully that'll help you guys uh, get, you know, get a better feel for the fight. But you might be asking, well... What do you mean that they were they were fighting? Obviously, Krolo was using Shalnark and Kurtopi's abilities. Is that what you mean? That's not what I mean. <laughs> so, uh, I'm going to leave all the links down below for you in case you want to see uh, some of the stuff that I saw, some of the research I did there. And let's go ahead and get started. Now, when the fight began, we saw that Krolo was in possession of all the abilities that he talked about. We saw him use them. And in particular, let's start with Kurtopi's ability. He said that when he uses it, if the puppet disappears, you can conclude that it is because I released my ability. Really interesting, right? If the, if the copies disappear, that means he's no longer using uh, Gallery Fake. Uh, he could be lying, but I, I think he's telling the truth here. So, why is it important? Well, much later into the fight, here's what Hisoka says. He says, if he used the hand of convert, he used the, the right hand of convert hands to create a Krolo copy and was controlling it, that's two abilities right there. Now, what am I talking? I'm talking about the dupe Krolo. If you remember, there was a dupe Krolo, which Hisoka ended up destroying. He thought it was a real Krolo, but it ended up being a dupe. Uh, it was a copy made by convert hands, and it was uh, being controlled by uh, apparently black voice. And... If you remember, Krolo can only use two abilities at one time. Uh, one with the bookmark and one with the page that he is open to. So, if uh, he was using both convert hands to maintain the dupe and black voice to control it, that's the only, that's the only powers he should be able to use. But, Hisoka wonders, why isn't the head that was from a copy dispelled, right? He's already using two abilities, so he should not be able to use gallery fake. Why has that copy not disappeared. Now, so it comes to a very interesting conclusion that it is the copies which have been marked with the sun and moon that can't disappear. But this doesn't make any sense. There, uh, it, Togashi is one of the most consistent writers when it comes to his abilities. Uh, even though sun and moon stays around, uh, that has nothing to do with gallery fake. There's no reason the gallery fake should stay around. And, okay, you might say, well, okay, potentially that could be a reason. But, there's some other stuff. Look at what Hisoka has to say. He concluded that due to this fact, and due to the fact that all these copies have Sun and Moons attached to them as well, he's running out to, in, instead of the 50 copies which he thought were left, there's only 20 to 30. Turns out there's over 200 copies. Okay? Now, Hisoka is not dumb. In fact, he's one of the, the best tacticians we've seen in the entire series. Uh, so, the fact that Hisoka keeps being incorrect time and time again during this fight throws you off. It says there's something wrong, something fishy, right? Well, what if I told you that uh, Kritopi got his abilities back mid-fight? Krolo had them in the beginning. What if Kritopi got him back mid-fight? Could explain how he went from a potential 20 copies to 200 copies. Could explain how he used three supposed abilities while maintaining the the dupe. Could explain a lot of things. Alright, well, as Kritopi. Let's move on to Shalnark. What, what about Shalnark? Well, take a look at this picture of the dupe Krolo once more. You notice something on the back of his head. What do you think that is? That's a needle. And you see Hisoka holding it in the next picture. That is a needle, but the only thing is kind of strange. Look at it. It doesn't look anything like Shalnark's typical needles. If you remember at the beginning of the fight, we saw Krolo with both the phone 
that Sean Rock always uses, and the two needles. But these are different needles. Interesting, right? Now, here's another thing to keep in mind. Remember, Sean Rock's ability can only maintain two people at the same time. And as we saw earlier, Hisoka said that the first two fodder units that he fought, you know, he said he, he used both antennas already, right? And then something weird happened, which I'll talk about in a little bit with those antennas, but for now, let's stay, let's stay with this. Uh, very interesting. So, you know, did he give back his ability to Sean Rock mid-fight as well? Well, I want you to look at this picture of Krolo using Sean Rock's ability. He's talking on the phone. Do you guys remember Sean Rock's ability? It definitely does not involve talking on the phone. What it is, is that it's actually Shalnark playing a little game. That's how he controls his opponents. But uh, Krolo isn't playing a game. He's talking on the phone. That leads me to believe once more that he does not have Shalnark's ability at this point. In fact, I believe that he's actually on the phone with Shalnark, trying to get uh, Shalnark to use his ability with those special, with those different set of needles to actually combine the Sun and Moon seal, which later take off Hisoka's hands. Now, again, this would explain the difference in needles. It's never been confirmed that you need those two specific needles, the, the trademark ones and that specific phone to use his ability. Cause I definitely think that he had a different phone and two, two, those little needles. People say they're Illumi's needles. Illumi in this part doesn't really make any sense. I do think it's Shalnark. I think that um, right after the initial confrontation, uh, Krolo gave back the power to Kritopi. That way Kritopi could start making copies. That would explain how he gets to 200 so quickly and how he can use all those different abilities at the same time. And then right after he used the both antennas, right at the beginning of that skirmish, he passed on the ability. And this makes sense because remember at the end of the fight, Krolo doesn't have the antennas. He says to Shalnark, hey, I don't have the antennas. So uh, I think they were used up here and then he gave the power back since he no longer has the antennas, no need to use it. Now, uh, keep this in mind. Uh, oh, there's a theory you know, going around that the old um, passages from the uh, York New Arc foreshadowed the, the events. Now, those passages are only supposed to last two to three months, or one, uh, two to three weeks, I should say. Um, but in this case, let's go over Shalnarx one more time. At the end of it, it says, because one time out of three and the other end will be the god of death. So if, in fact, Krolo is talking here to uh, Shalnark, that's one time. He talks to him at the end of the chapter when he's talking about going to the Dark Continent. And then the third, the third ring, boom, dead. So it could be definitely foreshadowing there. Although, again, remember these uh, neon uh, you know, future tellings were supposed to be uh, about two to three weeks in advance. So you know, just keep that in mind. Now... Last but not least, let's go over some creepy things that happen, spooky things that happen with those needles that I talked about earlier. Remember when he used those two needles? Hisoka notices something. He's like, when did the needles disappear? The antenna was definitely one of the real ones, wasn't it? Remember, the phone and the needles are physical objects. They're not made by Nen. They're not conjured by Nen. So Hisoka notices that they just randomly disappeared. And we know that Krolo doesn't have them. Again, at the end of the chapter confirms Krolo doesn't have them. So how do they disappear? Obviously, whoever, just, whoever has that ability afterwards isn't using those needles because he's using base needles. So I'm going to conclude that someone else has them. And here's what Hisoka says. Did he tie some fishing line to it or something and yank it back? Who do we know uses something like a fishing line? Well, that is Machi. Ma Machi also participated in the fight. And that's why she is uh, very willing to help out Hisoka, at least patch him up at the end, is because she knows Hisoka wanted that 1v1 fight, and he didn't get it, and he sort of got screwed over, and she feels a little bit of guilt, because, you know, but again, she is a spider, so she has to help out the spiders. Now, here's another thing, here's, here's one I haven't seen a lot of people mention, actually, I haven't seen anyone mention this. The bungee gum I attached to the ceiling, also, uh, just in case, is also gone, so this is when the explosion happened. And you'll notice that uh, the bungee gums him somehow randomly disappeared. This wasn't due to the explosion. Uh, this was due in case of something like that happening. I think Machi cut this down. Uh, I think using her her thread, she cut out the bungee gum. Another part where I think she participated in. And uh, again, something else that threw uh, Hisoka off guard because you know Chris Krolo couldn't have done that. There's no way Krolo could have done that uh, based on what he was doing. So overall. I think that this was a 1v4 fight between Krolo, 
Machi, Kritopi, and Shalnark. They all participated in it, and this would explain a lot of things. This would explain why the chapter where he is defeated is called Disappointment, because he was disappointed. He didn't get the fight that he wanted. He got uh, Krollo uh, to get help from his fellow Phantom Troop members instead of getting that, uh, that fight that he wanted. And that would explain why he's currently going after the spiders, because if he doesn't take out the spiders, Krollo will continue to use them in their fights. So the only way he can get a 1v1 fight, the true fight that he wants, is to eliminate all the spiders. And um, yeah, so that's very, very, uh, it makes a lot of sense, I should say. It, it help, helps me put it into perspective because before I'm like, why is Krollo going, I mean, why is Hisoka going after the spiders? It doesn't make any sense. It's not his character. But now we know why, because he disappointed and he got tricked and he knows it. He figured it out. Uh, the, by the end of it, he figured out that he was not fighting 1v1. So, some more evidence to show you guys. At the beginning of the fight, Krollo says, it is up to the ability user to compensate for its drawbacks. He's talking about the bookmark. The bookmark has a drawback we don't know about yet, and that's something that I'll leave for a later video, but to compensate for its drawbacks, keeping that in mind. For example, by concealing as much of it as possible. So he gave out a lot of information to throw Hisoka off. Uh, I don't think he lied to Hisoka, uh, but he just never told him that he would give the abilities back, so that's what threw him off. Um, but he didn't tell him about the drawback, so that's something we don't know about either. Uh, so, by for example, the ways you can compensate are by concealing as much of it as possible, carefully choosing the location, Heaven's Arena, with a lot of spectators that you can use, or the opponent, choosing Hisoka, you know, choosing to fight Hisoka, agreeing to fight Hisoka, he knows that Hisoka is going to play fair, he is someone who wants an, a legitimate fight and is not going to uh, go out his way to do any sort of underhanded tactics, perfect opponent for Krolo to uh, prey upon, and three, fight as part of a team. The, <laughs> the way you can compensate for it is to play uh, fight as part of a team, boom, there you go, four spiders versus one guy. And if you still don't believe me, Check this out. I got some more stuff for you guys. Uh, here we go. After Hisoka was revived, uh, he said some pretty interesting things. He said that while, uh, you know, it was, there's no way that he could have beat Krolo while being swarmed by other opponents. And he said that, that was a bit more than he could chew. Now, when I first read the chapter, I said, okay, being swarmed by other opponents means the swarm by all the fake uh, puppets or whatever. But now that I know about this, it becomes a lot more interesting. Swarm by other opponents means the other spiders. No way he can be Krollo when he has to take on three other spiders at the same time. Now let's go, uh, Machi ends up responding, saying, well, the next time, make sure to choose your opponent, singular, and the location of your fight more carefully. So Hisoka says opponents, Machi says opponent. Hisoka, uh, you know, clarifies and actually says, no, no, you got this wrong. This time, I'm, I've decided to make sure that my opponents don't get to choose. Again, plural, opponents. And the next thing he says is that I'm talking about the spiders. So he pretty much says right there, uh, there's no way I could have beat him, uh, you know, fighting him while swarmed by other opponents, aka the spiders, because he says I'm talking about the spiders, uh, was a bit more than I could chew. Uh, then she said, next time make sure to choose your opponent, okay, make sure don't fight Krollo. Uh, unless you're prepared and he's like well look I'm not the one who <laughs> ended up you know cheating out of the fight so next time I've decided to make sure that it's the spiders who can't choose where to fight or how to fight Whew. <laughs> crazy I I mean uh, Tagashi man uh, <laughs> not much more like not much more I can say about Tagashi so crazy video I will have a full battle analysis where I go over all the portions of the fight and all the abilities that Krolo was swapping between, uh, at least my interpretation of what was happening, with this theory applied, of course, because uh, there's only way the fight makes sense. And um, let me know what you guys think down below. Uh, you share the video, like the video, let other people know that this, that this is how the fight really went down. Because I don't think a lot of people... I mean, pretty much no one no one figured it out. It's only until a couple days ago that people really started realizing that, whoa, you know, what if this was not an actual 1v1 fight? And like I said, I think it's the only way the fight makes sense. A lot of things 
fit together once this uh, does, uh, you know, take form. And uh, I can't wait to see what you guys have to say. Again, a couple things before I end. Uh, people, some people think that the Sun and Moon guy was in the audience. Uh, I looked at the picture. It looks kind of similar, but at the same time, it doesn't. Don't want to make any assumptions there. And so again, some people think that the, ne the needles were from Illumi, but at the same time, I, I do think that they were Shalnark. Uh, like I said, it's never been uh, confirmed that Shalnark needs those specific uh, needles and a specific phone to use his ability. So I do think that that was Shalnark there. So with that said, guys, hope you enjoyed the video. And I'll see you guys on my next Hunter Hunter video with a full detail analysis of the fight. And until next time, thanks for watching.